and then we're stuck with it, and we're stuck in this place we are. I want, I want to get back to her. Thank you very much for that. I want to get back to our audience questions now. This is Carcina Dozier. She's a director of community relations in New York City, a Department of Homeless Services. What's your question, Car question Carcina? Great. Thank you. So um, I want to preface this question by saying that I'm asking it as a proud public servant of a very vulnerable population, as a loving sister and daughter of law enforcement officers, and also as a concerned citizen in this country who has witnessed up close and personal members of my race um, being mistreated and humiliated via racial profiling. And so my question for you all is, how can we say that the majority of police officers in this country are not racist or, or have an implicit bias against African Americans when every African American in this country has either experienced racial profiling or know someone who has experienced racial profiling. So how can we then say that there's only a small segment of police officers that are engaging in this practice? Okay, I want that Tom Jackson uh, is here. And Tom Jackson, I'd first let me introduce you because you, you may find him familiar. The former police chief of Ferguson, Missouri, was there during the whole Michael Brown, Officer Darren Wilson thing. A Federal Justice Department investigation found that your police department routinely stereotyped, discriminate against African-American residents, not just your department, according to a CNN and a Kaiser Family Foundation poll, one in five black Americans, to her point, felt that they had been treated unfairly by police in just the last month, okay? One in 30 white Americans, one in 30, as opposed to one in five white Americans felt that they had been mistreated by police in the last month. So, if this is a few, is this a few bad cops or is this a systemic problem? Well, first of all, I, I, uh, I know what it's like to be called a racist um, because that's, that's the, uh, the, the narrative that came of me after a 35-year career of uh, uh, proud law enforcement. But um, the, the fact is that I, I heard about the talk uh, during the Ferguson thing, and uh, it was the first time I'd heard that. And when it was brought to my attention during a town hall in Ferguson. I was, uh, I was saddened by that. I couldn't imagine they have to talk to my kids and tell them that. But also, I can tell you that, that police officers do not go out and routinely say, I want to have a confrontation with anybody. They, they go out to do a job to serve and protect. And the ones that I have worked with for the past 35, 36 years are proud of what they do. They believe in what they do, and they do it for the right reasons, and I think the... the but is, it, is this something that's ingrained, and, and I don't think people consciously, I think people, you know, agree with you consciously that police officers are doing this, but is this something that's ingrained in society? Is it ingrained in the training? Is it, are you, you know, those perceptions, do they come from the police academy, or just being in on the force? I, 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 don't, I don't think it's ingrained at all. Um, what I think we have is, a, is a, it was brought to... Uh, to the fore a little while ago, and it's what uh, Chief Brown from Dallas said, is that too much is being put on police officers, too much of society's ails. One of the big problems we have, we had in, uh, in Ferguson is a concentrated poverty, which I think is, is at the root of the problem. We're taking uh, poor people and concentrating them in small areas mm -hmm. um, with, with uh, HUD programs that are well-intentioned and well-meaning, but uh, are, are unregulated. Mm -hmm. So... We have um, uh, the responsibility goes to the police. So we have elevated crime, um, uh, broken down families, lack of education, lack, lack of jobs, lack of hope. And, so you, uh, you're saying police, it's more than just keeping the peace now. As, as the chief in Dallas said, it's, it's a number of problems. Too many police have to wear too many hats, and it, it's not fair. Absolutely. But the issue, though, the issue, though, is one of abuse and brutality and excessive force and that's where the specifics are. I know that police have a lot of hats but part of that is just being a police officer. Right, right. Well no officers should uh, should use excessive force and when they do they should be held accountable just like everybody else but I think we need to be uh, unequivocal in our support of law enforcement as a profession. You know we, we don't equivocate when we say we support our military except the bad ones. The bad ones should be held to account, but we need to be unequivocal in saying that we, as a country, support law enforcement, mm -hmm. and we need to redefine the role of law enforcement so that it's more effective 
and so there's less confrontation yeah. between the, the police and the community. I'm so glad that you're here. And you recently, re, hang on, recently you, you just, you, you, for a long time after Michael Brown, you didn't say anything. You sort of, I don't know if you went into hiding. I did. But you didn't, this is your, one of your first times actually speaking. You thought this was important enough to be here. Why, did, why are you here? Um, the, the last week, uh, I, saw, I saw those uh, two officer-involved shootings, and then I saw the vitriol and the hatred and, the, and everything come out from, from the whole community, and and uh, it, it brought me back to Ferguson when I saw, you know, these these lines of hundreds and sometimes thousands of people just shouting death threats at the uh, at the officers that were out there on the line every single.